Welcome back. The next talk of the section will be by Sadbor Sharapov, talking about results of genome-wide association study of plasma protein and glycosylation in a sample of uh, 10,000. And Sadbor, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Igor, <clears throat> for introduction. And in the beginning of my talk, I would like to thank the organizing committee for, for providing me an opportunity to give you a talk about our research on the genetic control of protoplasma and glyco. So, uh, to begin with, uh, glycosylation um, is a, an enzymatic addition of carbohydrate, so-called glycan to a protein. Uh, glycosylation is one of the most common and important post-translational and co-translational modification of proteins. It is known that more than the half of all human uh, blood plasma proteins are glycosylated. And on the slide, you can see a typical uh, glycoprotein where we have a glycan attached to an amino acid backbone of a protein. And the glycans are polymers of uh, different oligosaccharides, uh, most common of which are mannose, uh, n acetyl glucosamine, galactose, sialic acid, and fucose. And as you may hear from Lutz's talk, the glycans um, affect proteins' physical properties, such as folding stability, solubility, and etc., as well as uh, their biological functions, such as, sorry, such as. Um, different kinds of interactions, uh, for example, protein-protein, uh, cell receptor and host pathogen uh, interactions. So how can we analyze and measure the end glycol? We can use for these the chromatogram-based approaches, for example, ultra-performance liquid chromatography. So the pipeline of measurement is presented on the slide. So you start basically with a sample of human blood plasma where we have a mixture of different uh, proteins and glycoproteins. Uh, we treat this sample with special enzyme, PNGase-F, which cuts the N-glycans and from the amino acid backbone and release free N-glycans into the liquid. Then you label uh, the glycans with fluorescent label and put the fluorescently labeled N-glycans into the UPLC machine. Oh, something is wrong, it's not shifting. Uh, so what is human blood plasma n glycol It is a mixture of different glycan species attached to different glycoproteins most abundant of uh, which are IgG, IgM, and IgE, secreted to a bloodstream by antibody-producing cells, and other kinds of uh, glycoproteins such as fibrin again, serotransferrin, haptoglobin, and etc., secreted to a bloodstream by liver cells, hepatocytes. On this slide, you can see a typical uh, UPLC chromatogram of uh, human blood plasma sample. Uh, here we have 39 different glycan peaks, and each peak is formed by a uh, mixture of one, two, or three different uh, glycan structures, one of which is a uh, major structure. And <clears throat> quantita uh, quantitative measurement of glycan abundance in the sample is area under the peak. Um, the technological progress in uh, analyzing and measurement technologies in 2000. And tens allowed researchers to conduct well powered epidemiological studies of protein glycosylation. And from these uh, studies, we have learned that the protein glycosylation varies between individuals, and uh, this variation is associated with risk of human diseases such as type 1 and type 2 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and different types of cancer, and uh, etc. However, the interpretation of uh, observed associations. Uh, suffer from uh, our insufficient knowledge about, about uh, how this uh, glycosylation process is regulated in vivo, especially in a tissue-specific uh, manner. It should be also noted that from biochemical point of view, the um, enzymes and pathways are well known. We uh, quite well know them. So to uncover the, this uh, gene network that regulates the glycosylation process, we can use the genome-wide association study approach about uh, which Yuri and Yakov uh, have told before. So basically, if you want to conduct a GWAS, you need to collect the samples. You need to measure traits of interest in these samples, and you need to genotype the samples by millions of genetic markers, for example, single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs, for sure. And finally, you need to perform an association test between each SNP and each trait. Uh, you can uh, perform the test by applying a simple linear regression analysis, where re you regress your trait of interest against the gene type of a genetic marker. And out of which you receive the effect signs and the p-value of association. So you do this for millions of markers distributed across the genome and to determine the loss that influence 
um, the trade of interest, you apply the strict, strict threshold of five to the, multiply by 10 to the power of minus eight. So this is how you identify loci. And the final stage is so-called replication, replication stage, where you aim to reproduce found associations by applying the same protocol, but in independent samples. The first genome-wide association studies of total plasma and glycoma <coughs> were conducted in 2010 and 2011. And these studies allowed researchers to identify uh, six laws affecting the variation of total plasma and glycoma in human populations. Uh, four of these laws contain genes coding for uh, glucosyl uh, transferases, enzymes with known role in and glycan biosynthesis. And two laws did not contain such glycan synthesis gene. And um, in vitro functional study, in, in hepatic uh, cell lines, HEPG2, uh, allowed researchers to identify that the transcription factor HNF1-alpha, which acts in liver in hepatic cells, this tr transcription factor regulates um, the expression of most human glucosyl transferases. Therefore, the first juices uh, um, allowed to identify a strong regulator of protein fecalization. Um, uh, seven years later, we conducted the next round of genome-wide association study of total plasma and glycoma. In this study, we used almost 2,800 samples from UK. We analyzed the association between 113 different glycan traits and almost 15 million uh, SNPs. What we have found? Uh, we have found the 14 loci that passed the genome-wide significant levels. So basically on the slide, you can see a Manhattan plot which is a superposition of 113 different Manhattan plots. And among these 14 loci, 10 loci were novel. Then we conducted a replication study stage where we aim to replicate 12 loci and seven loci showed uh, the association with total plasma and glycoma for the first time. And for these 12 loci, we conducted an in silico functional study um, about which Lucia told before to prioritize the candidate genes and variants that, that may affect the uh, glycosylation. What we learned, we found that um, eight uh, loci marked with a uh, green circle contained genes coding glucosyl transferases. Uh, while uh, four loci marked with a uh, red circle did not contain such glycan synthesis gene. Therefore, this loci may contain a regulator of a protein glycosylation. Actually, one of these uh, genes you already know is uh, HNF1 alpha. And because we analyzed 113 glycan traits, so this is the omics multidimensional data, we aim to gain additional knowledge and insight from the multidimensionality of data we are analyzing. So therefore, we constructed a gene phenotype network <coughs> presented on, on, on this slide. So what we have here, we have uh, squares and circles. Squares represents loci that we have found and replicated uh, to be associated yeah, with total plasma and glycone. And in circles, we have glycan traits. Each arrow means that this locus is genome-wide significantly associated with this uh, particular glycan trait. And as you uh, can see, that's this network of uh, genes and uh, uh, glycan traits can be manually divided into the two subnetworks, the upper one and lower one. And actually, we then we labeled uh, each glycan trait uh, by uh, two colors, one of the two colors, either blue or pink. Blue color means that this glycan trait was is formed by glycans attached to immunoglobulins. Therefore, this glycan secreted to a bloodstream uh, by antibody producing cells. Oh. Probably I missed, yeah, blue color means, sorry, pink color means uh, the glycan trait, uh, glycan trait was formed by uh, glycans attached to immunoglobulins. And blue, blue color means uh, the glycan trait was formed by uh, glycans attached to non-immunoglobulin proteins. Therefore, they may secrete to the bloodstream, for example, by liver cells. And we can see a strong enrichment of uh, immunoglobulin-derived uh, glycan traits in lower network. And as you may have heard from a previous talk by Lucia Klarich, uh, this loss affects uh, immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin's glycosylation uh, too. And the upper network uh, may act actually non-in-antibody-producing cells 
not only in antibody resolution cells, but also in uh, hepatic cells. And now we are trying to functionally in vitro validate some of these, uh, some parts of this network. So next we um, aim to conduct the next round. So where we incorporate uh, more than 10,000 samples from eight cohorts. So actually this is three times uh, bigger sample size that we used to analyze before. In this step, in this stage, we have improved the panel of glycone traits. And because this um, analysis is computational and logistically demanding, we uh, use uh, in this analysis the GeoS map tool that we have developed in our lab. And actually, Tatiana Shoshko, in the end of this day, will talk more about the system. And in the beginning, we actually aim to we uh, aim to validate this protocol. What we did, we uh, uh, analyzed a subset of five thousand samples. Uh, so we aimed actually to validate the uh, novel protocol by replicating the loss that we were not able to replicate before. So we su succeed, we replicate additional three loci and we validated the protocol. So nowadays we are on a discovery stage. So uh, we found 41 loci affecting total plasma and glycol. 19 of these loci have never been uh, associated with uh, plasma protein or IgG and glycone. And actually we're <coughs> aiming to start the replication stage soon and then we will run the extended in silico function annotation of found loci. So this work was done in the laboratory of human glycogenomics uh, led by Professor Yuri Chenk in the Institute of Cytology and Genetics. So this is our young and brilliant team that uh, participated in this study. And the study was funded, sorry, by by the Russian Science Foundation. And of course, this study can, could not be done without the uh, help from our collaborations, collaborators who contributed uh, the data and their expertise. And I would like to mention the Professor Gordon Lautz from the Guinness, uh, who is, who is a strat our strategic partner. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sadbo. And, uh, uh, it seems that we do not have uh, any questions right now, uh, and we're also running uh, a bit late on time. So I suggest that we move on right to the next talk. So, uh -huh. And the next talk, thank you very much again. Thank you. And uh, the next talk, uh, and the last one uh, in this section, will be by uh, Olga Zaitseva. Uh, who will be talking about the of causal relationships between human immunoglobulin G and glycosylation traits and 12 associated diseases.